Hi everyone, I was asked today how we can add a dynamic field in an email template. Let's discover that. Okay, so let's imagine that I want to change a little bit, just a little bit here, what is happening when I click on send by email. You see when you click on that button, you get a pop-up and automatically it fetches the load template that we have here, the send quotation template. If I were to change that and have another uh, small addition in my email, I can do that. I can simply go here in the email templates. Once you are in debug mode, as you know it, here the technical aspect is only available in debug mode and I will look for that template. I will look here for the sales send quotation and here you see the template and you see different shades of blue, a bit of white and a few places where you can look already that is bold, uh, where you have placeholders, all those kind of things. How you can access the code that is behind, when you are in debug mode, you see that if you double click somewhere, you have access to that last icon that is here. And in fact, it will show you the code that is behind. And that is very important. Uh, maybe we can illustrate that with an example at the end. Uh, here we have the notion of the user signature that will be there. Uh, there we are going to uh, have a for loop to load uh, documents. Um, we have also the origin, so where that is coming from, if the object is created from usually a cell order, uh, um, a cell order I mean, a CRM lead, we would have it there. We have the document name, that is usually the quotation number, uh, you see it here, the object name. So all of those are variables that we are going to load, and usually we load them thanks to this little notion that is the T tag that is going to have an extra parameter of t out that is the output that we want to give to this particular tag so here you see let's take the example of the signature if we go back in the normal view by clicking that button you see that that's why we have initial admin here that is highlighted in blue and it's in blue simply because if i go back there you will see that it's the placeholder so we, it doesn't matter too much what is a placeholder usually when you create your own email template use a name or notion inside that tag that is meaningful for that placeholder. Now, let's add another uh, quick example. And what I wanted to do for this exercise is to, for example, quickly go into the companies and display uh, the website if there is a website, even if this one is fake. So if I go here, you see there's no real website behind, but it doesn't matter too much. What I want to show is how we could add a new notion here. And I'm going to add another tag that will be, again, a T tag with a condition. And I'm going to say that we, if on the record, have a company and that company has a website, we are going to display it. And I can use that. And on the record, we know, or maybe you know by now, that the company ID is required on a sale order. So anyway, I know it exists, but maybe uh, the website field is empty. So I still need to check if there's a value over there. I'm going to close the tag already. And there I'm going to say, okay, let's create a tag, um, link a tag, but I'm going to say that the href attribute should be computed. In order to do that, I need to prefix it with t80t. That will make it Odoo uh, compute it. And I'm going to add just here our we website. And I'm going to close this one here. And here I'm just saying exactly the same because that usually contains a website link. And if I save this one, Odoo is not going to give me an error even if the content is wrong or if I have an issue in trying to display the template. Uh, I could uh, make a huge mistake in terms of code. Saving is not going to tell me. What is going to tell me is clicking on the preview button. So here, if you click on the preview, Odoo is going to load the last sale order that you have in your sale order items. And here it's showing, okay, I have my link with our website. So it's very quick, very efficient to test my template by clicking on the preview button, knowing that it has the same effect and loads the same template as going back to sale order number 23, Set, send by email and have the right template being displayed in here. The only difference is that I don't need to move the screen. I'm still on the same email template notion. So here it seems to work. If I click on preview again, I will see that I can click on our website and it's loading my website link that is right here. Okay, that is functional. What can you do in terms of code? Uh, if you want to change and not have an example that is as simple, in fact, you can use a lot of things because you can load, uh, use any uh, objects that is, uh, of course, here uh, applied to. So you can create templates on many different objects. And in terms of uh, methods that are available on the object, you can use pretty much everything as long as it is already existing. You can also uh, reuse existing predefined methods like this one, where we are going to format the amount depending on the currency or a few things like those ones. 
Another thing you need to pay attention to is also the multi-language uh, capacity of Odoo. As you can see here, I have the little EN icon. I have different languages that exist. And if I click over there, I will see that I have English and French. So it's very important to also take care of changing when you make an addition to change the content uh, of that. Because you see here at the bottom, I will have right here the notion of my company with a website. If I want to have this in French, I will have to add it as well because here I see the user signature thing, but I don't see the information about the website. And maybe I can make that bigger in order to facilitate my copy pasting. And if I do that now, it is there in French as well. Let's imagine that I made a mistake with the French side. And let's go back right here, at the French, and um, let's remove website here and say webbed like this so that I have an issue in terms of translation. Maybe sometimes if I click on preview, I won't see it if the translated um, text is for um, is not shown at the beginning. You see here for the language. I need to select the language and I can force and that is maybe better than using the SO view because there it's going to select at all time the language of the customer. So you can change it from here while here you can play a little bit with the language and test different languages. And if I go there, it's going to tell me, hey, I have an issue. And it's going to tell you where you have an issue, but it's sometimes a bit harder for you to debug that kind of thing. But you will see that in French, there is a mistake while in English, it should go fine. So if I go back to English, then you see that the English side is correct. So it's always nice to have a look at the difference between one or the other language and to be sure that the translations are exactly the same. Let's imagine you made a mistake and you are so far in that mistake that you prefer to reset the template and start from the, be the beginning. You can always go back here and click reset template. And of course, clicking that will remove my changes and go back with the initial HTML document that we had at the beginning and I can start over. That's it.